Hi there. We're going to talk now about object-oriented programming. Now, I know that some of you have tried playing with object-oriented programming, and you might have gotten confused, you got frustrated. So we're going to walk through it step by step. We're going to have, over the next few episodes, we're going to talk about a single project, where we're going to progressively enhance it and add additional capabilities to it using object-oriented programming principles. I wanted to start off, though, talking a little bit about what this means. We're not going to have to talk about the project quite yet. But let's think about how objects work. When we've been in Flash Professional before, everything that we've worked with, whether it's a movie clip or something that we've created on the stage, is some sort of object. It has a name. If you remember in the early episodes, I used this concept of a post-it note, where the post-it note stack represented a class of objects. And you're taking instances off every single time you peeled a piece of paper off of the post-it stack. When we create classes, which is the basic building block of object-oriented programming, we're defining specifically what the behavior of the objects are going to be in that Post-it stack. So in your library in Flash Pro, you might have had objects that represented buttons or other graphical elements or animation components of your application. But they didn't really have any true internal behavior other than, other than maybe some frame scripts that you put inside of your timeline. Classes will now give every object that you have in your, in your library panel a specific intrinsic behavior that you can customize and, and modify. Every single time you make an additional instance of one of those objects in the library, every single one of those will have the same internal logic that you've defined inside of your class. Now, there are some terminologies that we'll, that we'll be going through in the, next, in the next few episodes. But class is that one core piece of object-oriented programming. And every single object that we create in the library panel will have a corresponding class, as well as a class that is linked specifically to the basic flaw of your application, which is called the document class. We'll cover the document class and how to create that in your project in the next episode.